Now we're going to take a look at the toolbar and dig in deeper into what each tool does. Many of the tools you'll learn in one program with Adobe will appear in other programs. To get started, let's just do a general overview. The toolbar is typically docked to the left. Now let's get started with our selection tool. So notice when I mouse over each tool, I get a tooltip that's helpful because as you're learning about InDesign, it also shows you what the keyboard shortcut is that you can use to access that tool. So the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, allows you to select objects, to move them, and resize them, whether it be text boxes, objects, or images. The direct selection tool allows you to select part of an object. So I'll select that point. Notice when I selected it, it became blue. And I can move that. Notice how I'm also getting that little icon that I have a path selected, and I can move that. The next tool is our Pages tool. And our Pages tool allows us to shuffle page order and to resize pages. Next is the Gap tool, which allows you to resize objects, but keep the space in between them the same. The Content Collector tool is next, which allows you to access content and reapply it to other pages. So I can collect by hitting the Collector button and collecting these different icons. And then I can add a page and send these back out to the next page. This is a pretty handy tool when you have things like logos and images or other design elements that you might use on multiple pages. Let's go ahead and move on to our drawing and typing tools. The type tool allows you to create text boxes or access content in a text box. Once those are accessed, you can go to the Properties panel and change those fonts. We'll look at that more in our font unit. You've noticed we have these little white arrows next to some tools. That means there's tools embedded. For example, the Type on a Path tool, which allows us to type on a path, whether it be a shape path or a path we've drawn. The Line Segment tool allows you to draw strokes or line segments. And if you want to keep them perfectly straight, you just hold the Shift key down while you draw. The Stroke Options, located here, allow you to change size, color, and even the type of stroke that you have. Your Pen tool allows you to create Bezier curves. And like with everything else we've looked at, they have both fills and strokes. And so I don't have a fill right now, but if I added one, it would create that fill. If you just want that stroke, it's best to have that fill turned off. The tools below the pen tool are related to adding anchor points, deleting those anchor points, or changing the direction handles. And the direction handles are what helps make the curves. So that's how we can change those. The pencil tool allows you to create pencil paths, laying down both points and paths. Underneath that, you have a smooth tool, which will allow you to smooth out some of the curves that you created while drawing and an erase tool, which will allow you to erase parts of a path. 
Next we have the shape and the frame tools. These might look really similar, but they're actually for two different purposes. So if you want to place a photo, you should use the frame tool. These frames don't really exist and are actually non-printing guides. You can hide them if you click W. So if you want to see them if you're printing a document, you either need to have a fill or a stroke. The rectangle tool is really for shape drawing. So if you were doing a sidebar and wanted to have a gray box behind something, that is the tool that you would use. Below that is the scissor tool, and if we have a path selected, it's going to allow us to take that path and cut it. So now we have two separate paths. Below that is the free transform tool, which includes rotating, scaling, and shearing. The gradient tool allows us to apply an already selected and created gradient. So we'll bring up our gradient panel and you can see we have a default black and white gradient. So with that selected, I can make that my fill. The gradient tool allows me to change the direction of that gradient. The gradient feather right below that works to provide a gradient but with the transparency based on the object already there. So for example, if I select this shape, run the gradient feather, it's just going to feather out that blue. You can also feather out images. The notes tool is a good way to communicate if you're working with a few different people on a page design. You need to alert them to a problem or have a question. That's what this little icon here is. And if you click it, you can see there's a question there. Notes can only be added to text. The eyedropper tool allows you to pick items like color, fill, and stroke for objects, and text style for fonts. So I can select this style and apply it to this font. I can take the style of this object and apply it to this one. The hand tool allows you to navigate around your page or pages. The zoom tool allows you to zoom in on certain areas either by clicking or dragging a marquee and scrubbing. This is the fill and stroke of an object. Whatever is in front is what you're working with and you have fill and stroke here in the toolbar as well as in your properties panel. I typically change my fill and stroke in my properties panel. Next we have our most recently applied colors and the last option is our view. So if we want to look at our preview or our slugs and bleeds we can do that. And that is your toolbar overview.